Yeah, hey everyone. So my name is Matt Hartman. I'm one of the customer engineers here at Google Cloud. And today I'll be talking about how to privately expose some sort of service. So in this case, it's going to be a virtual machine up through the application integration layer to an integration connector. So with that, we'll be talking about networking controls, firewall rules, and anything and everything you need to be able to expose your specific service. So first things first, as a part of this, is I'm gonna create a VPC network. So everything we'll be doing is via UI. Obviously you can use automated controls, G Cloud commands, APIs, and everything along those lines to be able to automate this. But just for ease of use and ease of access, I figured the UI might be best for now. So first item I'll be doing is creating my VPC network, which at a high level, if you're not familiar with VPC networking controls, this VPC is kind of just like your secure isolated environment within the public cloud infrastructure. So you can guardrail who has access to what, what services have public access, what services are private access, and kind of anything in between. So I'll just call this my demo VPC. You can also modify like maximum packet sizes and items of that sort. So for now, I just think the rest of the defaults are fine. For a subnet, so again, if you're not super familiar with networking controls, your subnet, subnet is basically the way to divide your network into some sort of logical chunk. So the first chunk that I will be creating is a subnet for a lot of the entities that I'll be creating today. So I'll just say like um, my um, services subnet, um, the region, I'll make it US East 1 because that's the closest that I am to. Um, so there, IP range, I'll just create a slash 26 setter range. For this specific use case, is 10.42.0.0 slash 26. Um, I don't really need anything else as a part of this. Um, I might just put on private Google Access for now, just so that it's enabled. It basically now allows you to connect to Google services via a private IP instead of private, because we'll be building on this series, so I'll just have it enabled for now. So I'll click done there. Um, firewall rules. I mean, the only thing I'm going to do for now is I'll allow SSH traffic so that I can actually get into the service that I'm gonna build to be able to um, download the needed software, expose a service to be able to be consumed by application integration and everything in between. The rest of the firewalls we'll create in real time, um, but from there, we should be good to go. So I'm gonna create my VPC, and with that, obviously, I'll have my subnet as well. So once this is created, I'll show you what we currently have available. And then I'll go on pause for a second while I install a virtual machine in that subnet, download the needed software, and we'll go over that as a part of um, basically once this video is unpaused. But yeah, what we'll see right now is here's my demo VPC. I have my subnet, my services subnet, and I'll be right back. Hey everyone, so I'm back. And basically what I did in the background is like I mentioned, I installed a virtual machine as a part of that underlying subnet that we created before called My Demo Instance. I'm using Cloud Shell, as you can see here, um, to be able to SSH into that underlying instance. And I downloaded a set of softwares that we'll use as a part of this series. Today, we'll be concerned about FTP traffic, but I'll extend this out to all the functionality that will be covered. So basically what I did, like I mentioned before, is I installed and downloaded an FTP service on this underlying demo service virtual machine. So just to prove that it works the expectation, and again, we'll talk about how you expose this through the network, is I will just type an FTP and then the private IP address of this underlying service. So I will go there. Um, so my user, I just call the demo user, and I will type in my password. And as you can see, I'm in. So I can list directories and kind of just do anything and everything I need to. So what I basically proved is that this works locally and now I want to extend this functionality. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start opening up firewall rules to be able to extend that functionality through the application integration layer. So if I go to my VPC and I click on my demo VPC, what I will do now is I will go to my firewall, I'll create a rule, and I'll extend this out to all the ports for this use case and subsequent ones as well. So again, 
Might depend different based on your use case. So maybe it's port like 3300 for something SAP related or port 22 for SFTP. For now, the easiest way just to showcase this functionality will be FTP. So I'll just say, um, allow my service traffic. And I have my demo VPC, it's ingress, I'll allow it. And for now, it's all instances in the network. If I wanted to get fancier, I could obviously tag that virtual machine and say anything with this tag key value pair. So I'll say um, 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 slash 0. Again, you can restrict this with minimal viable privilege sets and determine the ingress point to your system. But for now, because there isn't any public connectivity to this VPC, anything is in theory fine. Um, so specific ports, so I'll say 20. 21, which are data and FTP ports. 1,000 is a passive port for a different use case that we'll see as well, and can also be used for FTP. And 1,001 would be another potential passive port as a part of this. So basically what this is saying, and again, if you wanted to automate this, you could see the command line tool. Allow all traffic from anything that comes in ingress to my system on these ports. Because again, everything is still private connectivity. We haven't done anything to enable a public DNS or anything along those lines. Okay, so now I have my firewall rule created. Next item I'm going to do as a part of this is I'm gonna take that virtual machine and bundle it into something called an instance group. So if I go to instance groups, the purpose of an instance group, again, is it's a logical grouping of your virtual machine instances. You can either have them managed or unmanaged so for this use case, again, it's just more of a POC than anything else. I'm gonna use unmanaged, um, but managed kind of gives you the flexibility to say, okay, I want to auto scale based on these capabilities. I wanna perform more robust health checks and kind of anything and everything in between. So I'm gonna create my instance group here. So I will call this, um, or actually, I don't think I need to necessarily do that from here. I, there's an easier way to do it than I think about it. So if I go to my, um, actually, let's just do it from here. This is fun. Um, so I'll call it my demo instance group. Oh, that's why there's my unmanaged. Um, I, so again, unmanaged, like I talked about before, US East, um, the zone, it's fine as is. So I'll click my demo VPC. I will then select my um, I think it's in C, that might be why. Yep, there we go, so my demo service. That is exposed, because again, it has to map to the zone. No port mapping, don't need to get anything fancier with these underlying capabilities. It's just exposing it across the network more than anything else. So like I said before, I now have my demo instance group, which should have my virtual machine in it. Not sure why that wasn't selected. Let me modify that. Nope, it's in there. Okay, probably just loading. Not a problem at all, there it is. Great, so now that I have my unmanaged instance group, the next item that I will do as a part of this is I'll create a health check. So health check basically determines, and again, this is gonna extend out to more functionality like we talked about before, but um, it's basically saying, okay, if I'm checking this virtual machine in this port and I don't get some sort of expected response code, I don't wanna send traffic to that virtual machine. You can create alerts and kind of do whatever you want as a part of that as well. But again, I'm just doing the bare minimum as a part of this POC, so I'll call it my demo dash HC. I'll call it global, more than fine. Again, port 21 for now, because that's gonna be the FTP port for what we're doing. Don't need logs, um, the minimal viable is fine about how they would add and remove capabilities depending on the result code. So global, I have my demo health check. And now we're gonna to get to the point where we actually create the load balancer. That's gonna map everything that we've created before. So if I go into my load balancing capabilities, I'm gonna create a load balancer. And what I'm going to do is this very easy GUI is gonna help me guide, this, guide me through this process. So it's a network load balancer, first things first, because again, it's not HTTP or HTTPS traffic, i.e. 80 or 40, 443. It's gonna be 20, 21, 1000, 1001. So, Again, I'm gonna select next here. No proxying needed, it's just a simple pass through. I just wanna take anything that comes in from the client layer and push it through to my virtual machine set. Um, it's internal, like we mentioned before, we're not exposing anything across the internet. Now I'm gonna create it. 
And then from there, let's start creating the underlying capabilities and metadata to my demo um, LB. I will again map it to the same region because that's kind of just how you have to do it within Google Cloud. So my demo there, um, I will use my instance group that I created before. So it's basically saying, here's my front end. What am I forwarding this underlying proxying service and this pass through service through? So that's going to be my demo instance. Um, so I'll click done there. What I'll also do, so that's the back end configuration. I'll add my health check like we talked about before. Um, good, should be good there. Front end, um, we're not going to share this IP. We can allow it to auto allocate it. Um, it's again, my services subnet. That's why we created that subnet. Um, so I'm going to pick multiple ports like we talked about before. So I'll do 20. I will do 21, 1000 and 1001 because these are going to be all the different ports that I'm going to use as a part of this use case. But again, this might depend. It might just be 22 or 3300 or whatever it may be for your use case. So global access, I'll enable it. Um, fine from that perspective. And I'll create my load balancer. So now that my demo load balancer is actually being created behind the scenes, the next item that we're going to do is we're going to create a private service connectivity endpoint. So the purpose of a PSC is this private service connectivity endpoint is it establishes and it's basically a managed service that allows you to perform private connectivity between your services. Pretty self-explanatory there. So whether it's from VPC A to VPC B or some sort of VPC to a Google service, there's this producer and consumer model where you can allow list specific projects, ingress, egress, and kind of everything in between. So you'll see that in a second as well. So now that I have my demo basically created, as you can see here, I have my front end created. It gave me some sort of IP address, a firmal. Um, I have my back end service. I have my health check and kind of anything and everything in between that I will need. So like I mentioned from there, I'm going to go to private service connect and I'm going to publish a service for application integration to consume. So I'm going to go publish that service like I mentioned before. It's an internal pass through. So we'll go to my demo, the service name, we'll call it my demo service. Um, the subnet, again, we'll create a new subnet and we'll add a new firewall rule for this as well. So I'll call this um, my PSC subnet and um, my, my, let's call it my PSC um, SN is fine then. IP range, so I'll use another set of range, so 10.43.0.0 slash 26. Um, so I'll add that. So again, this is a new subnet and this is subnet for PSC because it's gonna act as that buffer between my client layer and the rest of my VPC, i.e. my service that I'm gonna expose, we're gonna to need to allow traffic from the subnet through the network. So we'll do that in a second. So you can also, like I mentioned before, say specific projects, specific networks can connect for now. I'll say auto accept all, but again, depending on your use case, least security access, you can do the top two there. Um, so I'll just add that service. And while that service is being created, I'm gonna go back to my VPC um, so what I will do, as you can see here, is I'm going to go into my demo VPC. I will create a new firewall rule. So I'll say, allow my PSC traffic. Pretty self-explanatory there. Um, so what I will do is I will go ingress, allow all instances. Um, so from the source, so to that PSC layer, 10.43.0.0 slash 26. Um, we'll allow all traffic for now because again, it's internal network communication, not too worried about specific protocols and ports for now, because I'm not exposing anything else besides those four ports we talked about before. So I'll create that role. Great. Now that that is created, my private service connect should also be ready to be exposed. So, um, I do have my demo service. Great. And the key part of this that is important is the service attachment ID. So I'm going to copy that because that's going to become important in a second. 
Because what I'm gonna do is now that we have everything set up on the server side, I'm gonna expose this via the client layer. So if I go to my sandbox, which has application integration already installed, I'm gonna create an endpoint attachment. So let's take a step back and let's just go to integration connectors. Perfect. Um, cool. So I'm gonna create a new endpoint attachment like we talked about before. So like we said, this is the interface and this is how the client is able to consume your PSC service. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create that logical representation we talked about before. So I'll call it um, my demo service EA, um, the region, I'll pick US East one. Service attachment ID is exactly what we copy pasted before. Global access, again, just fine. Um, so I'll create that. And what you'll see in the background actually that's pretty cool while that's being created is you'll see that underlying project ID, that's that SaaS service for application integration, actually consuming the underlying PSC service. So what I'll go into here, so if I go into my published service, you'll see a connected project in a second once it gets to the point where it establishes connectivity. So if I go back into the, the service, there we go. There's my project, it was auto accepted. Again, these can be pending. You could deny them, accept, remove, whatever it may be for your use case. So now that if I go back to um, the connection tab, like we talked about before, I now have my endpoint attachment. It's spinning up, so just give it a second. Should be done in a minute or so. So just give it a sec. I'll pause the video while I wait for it to spin because it might just take a minute or so. So I'll be right back. All right, so it looks like my demo service finally spun up. So as you can see here, I have a private IP address that's mapped through the network, again, through the load balancer, through the unmanaged instance group to the virtual machine. So we've set up that entire connectivity layer. And we've allowed a different project to consume that underlying functionality. So now I'm gonna create a new connection. Again, it's gonna be an FTP connector because I did expose port 20 and 21. Um, so if I go to FTP, if I go to um, demo service connector, just name it something. I can enable cloud logging um, for troubleshooting and just monitoring purposes, but for now, um, fine. Um, so nothing SSL related. Next set of videos, we'll get into a little bit more SSL and use cases like that if there's interest. But for now, I'm um, just again, a very, very simple connectivity method into the service. So. I just map the host address to that private IP. You can also use the endpoint attachment. I just wanted to show the full life cycle of this is the private IP that was allocated to me within the endpoint attachments. From there, I'll just type in my creds. So I'll create a secret in secret manager. Cool. So now that that is Granted, so what that's saying is the service account that represents the connector has to have access to the underlying secret that I created. Um, and from there, I will create. And what you'll see in a minute, once this finishes spinning up, is my service should be active. So I'll go and pause again for a second, because again, this takes a minute or so, but once it's creating, it'll get in an active state. So just give us one second. All right. And as you can see here, we now have our connector active. It just took a minute or so. So obviously I want to pause from there. So yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to cover today. That entire layer of how do I consume some sort of service from a publisher through private service connect all the way downstream to my underlying service. So thank you everyone for listening and appreciate your time. Bye.